Hello, I'm Garnet. This is Eggs. Harvest Moon Magical Melody is a farming and life sim game developed by Marvelous Interactive for the GameCube in 2005. It's actually an updated version of the Japan-only Shiwase no Uta that was released the same year. There's also a version that Japan didn't get, the Wii version, which added motion controls but took away the ability to play as a girl and marry bachelors. Most of the Harvest Moon games from around this time were separated between genders, but luckily if you have the GameCube version of Magical Melody, you get to buy just one game and pick from there. Uh, also, there was a rumor that I fell for that the original Japanese version had rival marriages. There are images of all the couples together, and those images were created by Marvelous themselves as a way to promote the game, so the images aren't fan-made or anything. They're official, but nope, there are no rival marriages. They're not, they're not in any version of the game and I'm a little disappointed to learn that. I've seen people saying that when you marry Jamie, you get a scene where the rival you're closest to gets married to whoever they're paired with, which I have married Jamie, and I do remember there being a scene between Gina and Alex, but I can't remember if they were talking about marriage or anything like that, and uh, maybe they were, but I think I think it would be weird for it to be because of being close to Gina. Because I don't usually talk to her a lot. I can't imagine that she would be the one with like the highest amount of hearts. Um, but I, I was wooing Alex alongside Jamie, so I don't, I don't know if that's why. But you sure do get some sort of scene for some reason. Is that useful? The story is the same no matter who you play as. The Harvest Goddess has turned herself to stone because Flower Bud's villagers don't believe in her enough, and a farmer of mostly indeterminate gender named Jamie vows to save her. Then you move in, meet the Harvest Sprites, and decide, you know what? I'm gonna save the Goddess as well. And Jamie hates your guts because they want to be the only one to save her. So now you have a rival. To save the goddess, you'll need to do various things on your farm and in your life in order to obtain musical notes. It works just like the sprites in DS and Cute. After just 50, you'll be able to unstone her. When you move into the village, you meet Theodore and get to pick out where you want to live, which can be the village center, Oceanside or Riverside, and no matter what you pick, you can buy more land as you play. I've chosen all of the locations on different save files on many, on multiple occasions. I've played this game a lot. The Oceanside gives you more space right off the bat, so if you want to put your barn and coop there close to your house, that works really well. Or you can plant a lot of crops there, but uh, the soil's not going to be great. And you're not going to have enough energy in the beginning to do a lot of crop farming right away. You, you should do as much as you're capable of, but you gotta be careful. The village center doesn't give you much space right away, but there's land connected to it that you can buy later. So it'll end up being a pretty big space in time. I wait until I buy that land to build my barn and coop and just focus on crops until then. The Riverside is the most challenging location because it's really small and no buyable land is attached to it, so when you do buy more land, you'll have to do some walking to get your daily work done and time moves pretty fast in this one. Crop farming is the classic Harvest Moon style. You buy seeds from Spring Farm and each bag has nine seeds that you plant in a 3 by 3 square and you will not be able to walk through them, so put space between each 3x3 three three square or else you won't be able to water everything when you haven't upgraded your can and you won't be able to harvest the regrowable crops in the middle. If you don't have that space, you're just throwing seeds away. I've honestly never really liked that, not being able to get to your middle crop, like what is the point in it being 9 by 9 if the middle one gets wasted? Similarly to Wonderful Life, there are three different soil types, and they affect your crop growth speed. Normal is normal. Fertile will be one day quicker, and Sandy will take a day longer, I think. And how to tell the difference is just look at the color. Darker soil is better, lighter is worse. You can use fertilizer to get the best quality from every square, but 
To unlock it from Spring Farm, you need to mine and ship 10 limestones first. That's very specific. Your farm animals are more or less what you'd expect from a Harvest Moon game. You've got your bubble cows, sheep, and horses in the barn, and just chickens in the coop. You buy them and the tools you need for them at Blue Sky Ranch. Barn animals need fodder that you buy from Blue Sky Ranch, or you can grow it yourself by buying the seeds from Spring Farm and letting the animals outside to eat. You can walk through grass, so no space is necessary. Cows and sheep will continue to produce milk and wool if you leave them out overnight. And you can hand feed your animals, which is great, but it can be really annoying if you're trying to place the fodder and someone just happens to be standing too close and you just keep stuffing the food in your face over and over and over again. It's so wasteful. Barn animals will be babies when you first buy them, so you'll need to give them some time before you can sell their products. You can buy a milker to milk the grown cows once per day with, and shears to shear your sheep with every seven days. All barn animals can be brushed. Your horses can be used for transportation, and if you take good care of them, they'll be able to win at the horse races. All barn animals can have babies if you buy miracle potions for them at Blue Sky Ranch. Chickens need their own feed that you can also buy at Blue Sky Ranch. If it's animal related, just go to Blue Sky Ranch. You can't make any chicken feed for yourself. You can hand feed chickens and you can let chickens outside like the other animals, but if you leave them overnight, they won't produce any eggs. So that's really just a waste of time if you ask me. Time freezes indoors, but moves pretty fast outside. So I really prefer to take care of my animals inside the barns and coops. Chickens lay one egg every day and there's an incubator so you can just use uh, those eggs to hatch more chickens. You'll only ever need to buy one chicken. Rain and starvation will make your barn and poop animals sick and they'll die if you don't cure them. So you can buy animal medicine from Blue Sky Ranch. Always good to stock up on that in case you need it when the shop is closed. This applies to horses as well. They are not immortal in this game. You can buy makers for cheese, butter, yarn, and mayonnaise from the junk shop and they'll go into your barn and coop. There are a lot of festivals in this game. There are festivals for animals, romance, some where you play a mini game, and some where you just kind of exist and it's nice. The mini games can be a little frustrating, uh, but you can play them with friends. So that's neat. I like the romantic festivals. They're so cute. The dialogue uh, can make things a little weird though. Some festivals will need you to place a certain item in the shipping box that's in the town square before the day of the festival. So that shipping box before the festival. The sign will tell you what you need and when you need it. There are two pets that you can have that you'll just get automatically. Ellen will give you your dog on spring 2nd, which is actually like the first day that you actually get to play on. And the other pet I'm so excited to have tell you is a pig. I love the pig. When you build your first barn, the gourmet will chase the pig there. And after clearing up a little misunderstanding about his intentions towards that pig, he ends up giving it to you. The dog can't really do anything useful for you since there are no wild dogs or anything to chase away and there's no dog specific festivals, but the pig can help sniff out truffles for you and it eats weeds. It doesn't do well at finding truffles until you raise its affection. Your pets are immortal, so you can ignore them if you suck, but picking them up, brushing them, and giving them food will raise their affection for you. And even if you kick them outside, they will always be inside your house in the morning, right where they belong. There's also a ton of wild animals that you can befriend. You can't make any of them your pets, <laughs> but being nice to them keeps Terry in town. I like to pick a different animal as my character's favorite each playthrough. I rarely ever want to fish in the games where time moves fast, but it's not too bad in this one. You can see the fish like an Animal Crossing. And all you have to do is hold down uh, the X button as soon as the fish touches. It's so much easier than usual. What's really cool though, when it comes to fishing, you can befriend a dolphin. It's one of the animals you can befriend. And it will take you to an island to fish on. You, you can ride, yes, you can ride the dolphin. There are two mines. Moonlight Cave is the one you can access all year 
and contains ores and other materials you will need to ship and use for upgrades. You'll need a hammer to hit rocks and a hoe for digging. The further down you go, the better things you'll find. You will need to either find a staircase to move lower in the mine or find a spot where you can fall through the floor, but sometimes you'll be sent upwards wasting time, so be careful. The lake mine is the one you can only access in the winter and has gems inside. Actually, I think there's gems in Moonlight Cave for, for far down too, but this one has gems like all throughout. Since you can't farm in winter and time freezes in your barn and coop, this mine will take up most of your winter time and will become your main source of income. Both mines have 100 levels and good luck getting to the bottom. You have several tools that can be leveled up. A watering can for watering crops, a sickle for cutting weeds and grass, a hoe for tilling land and digging in the mines, a hammer for returning the land to normal, mining and whacking moles, an ax for chopping lumber and a fishing rod for fishing. There are two ways to upgrade these tools. One way is to just buy them at the junk shop. It's pricey this way, but if you have the money already, it can be the quicker way. The other is to take your tools to the blacksmith. You'll need to supply the necessary ores yourself and you'll probably only want to upgrade your farming tools during winter when you don't have any crops because it will take two days for the new tool to be ready and you don't want to go without a watering can. There are so many marriage candidates in this game. 10 bachelors, 10 bachelorettes, one Jamie, for a total of 21 characters that you can marry, unless you're playing on the Wii, then it's just 11. In order to get married, you need to upgrade your house to level three and buy any double bed, there's multiple ones, both of which you can do through Woody at his workshop. You need to get at least 30 musical notes, which isn't very difficult. The candidate needs to be at eight hearts or higher and there are no heart events, so don't worry about that. Finally, you need to climb Mount Moon after you're told about the blue feather. It triggers a mini game where you have to dodge rocks that are falling down towards you. The things you do for love. At the top, you'll get the blue feather and then you'll be all set. Or at least you will be for everyone except for Jamie. Jamie's extra requirements are to get 50 musical notes and revive the goddess, ship at least one of every crop, have at least one of every animal, and have the Animal Kingdom and Birth of Life notes, which these notes add the extra, extra requirements of leveling up your barn and completely filling it. That'll be eight animals. Your coop doesn't level up, but you have, you have to fill it as well. That'll be five chickens. And at least one of your animals has to have given birth at least once. Then, then you'll be all set. Honestly, compared to some of the requirements from like Friends of Mineral Town or DS, this isn't that bad. Someone like Jamie could have made things so much more complicated for us. For Jamie, you won't have children because the game ends, but for everyone else, you will. And it is not optional. 20 days after you get married, you or your spouse will become pregnant. The pregnancy will last for two seasons. When the baby is born, you are not told what their gender is, so just make it up yourself, I guess. Woody will give you a baby crib that you can put wherever you want in your house, and your brand new baby will stay in that crib for two more seasons. After that, they reach stage two where they can now walk around and are still very much a baby, and you can pick them up and put them back in the crib. They will never ever grow past this stage. Honestly, not a big fan of the children in this game. They're, they're not interesting. They just stay as a baby forever and they're loud. <laughs> Marriage candidates have rivals, but they will never get married, unfortunately. Each rival couple will just have one event and that's it. The rival will have to have four hearts or more and the candidate will have to have four, uh, less than four hearts. You can lower their heart level if you want to see the event but can't currently. You'd have to either give them things they dislike or hit them with your tools. And now to introduce all 21 marriage candidates to you. Oh, by the way, by the way, actually, half of the bachelorettes are from Super Nintendo and the other half are from um, 
Save the Homeland. Half of the bachelors are from Save the Homeland, while the other half are made to be similar to uh, the bachelors from like, like Friends of Mineral Town. I guess it would actually be like 64, but you can't actually marry guys in 64. The rivals, the rivals from 64, there we go. Um, more or less. There's some oddities. Nina, Liz's daughter who lives and works at Spring Farm. She's very sweet and cheery and all about flowers. She's there from the start and never moves out. Your rival for her is Basil. Eve, Terry's granddaughter and Duke's niece who lives and works at the Moonlight Cafe. She likes hearing people's stories and worries about her grandfather. She arrives on the first day of summer and moves out if you don't talk to her and don't ship enough crops and fruits. Your rival for her is Dan. Ellen, Hank's daughter and Blue's cousin who lives and works at Blue Sky Ranch. She loves animals and baking sweets. She's there from the start, gives you your dog in the beginning and never moves out. Your rival for her is Carl. Also, her unnamed mother from SNES is missing in this game. I assume she's dead, but I can't recall any lines saying that she is. I just assume she is. And she looked a lot like Vesta. Um, RIP. <laughs> Anne, Michael's daughter who lives and works as an inventor in the junk shop. She's a tomboy and likes hanging out in the mines. She's there from the start and never moves out. Your rival for her is Blue, Maria. Theodore's daughter who lives with him and works at the library. She loves to read and even though the church and priests are just missing from this version of Flower Bud, she seems to be the most religious character still in the game. She arrives with, with the library on spring 10 and never moves out. Your rival for her is Ray. And like Ellen's mother, Maria's mother was also present in SNES, but is missing from Magical Melody, which I'm also assuming means she's dead, so RIP again. Wow. Lila, another cheery, wavy, pink-haired girl who loves flowers. We needed two. She opens up a gift shop called Hardy Lila after she's introduced at the Flower Festival on Spring 23 and moves out if you don't talk to her and don't ship enough flowers. Your rival for her is Lewis. Gwen, I don't know why she couldn't be named Sarah. Another ponytail blonde with red eyes. <laughs> Two of those were necessary as well. I'm not complaining. I wasn't complaining about the pink haired ones either. She's more different from Eve though. She's a horse girl and you'll meet her for the first time at the horse race on spring 17th, but she doesn't move in until the perch inn opens on summer 1st. She moves out if you don't talk to her and don't ship enough animal products. Your rival for her is Bob. Katie, a hardworking girl who loves to bake cakes. And since she's not that good at it, she works at Cafe Callaway as a waitress. She arrives when the cafe opens on fall 1st and moves out if Carl moves and closes the cafe. So you have to ship baking ingredients like milk, eggs, and breadfruit. Your rival for her is Joe. Dia, a lonely, frail girl who is hesitant to open up to people. She lives at the sanatorium where she's taken care of by Alex, Martha, and Gina, mainly Gina. She'll arrive once you've shipped 30 herbs, unlocking the sanatorium, and moves out if you don't talk to her and don't keep shipping herbs. Your rival for her is Kurt. Gina. Martha's granddaughter who works at the clinic and as Dia's nurse at the sanatorium. She is quiet and caring. She will arrive with Dia when you unlock the sanatorium and of course will also move out if you don't ship enough herbs. Your rival for her is Alex. Jamie, your eternally grumpy rival in farming. They're there from the start and they never move out. Jamie is a special candidate that you couldn't marry in the original Japanese version, so they don't have a rival. You need to save the goddess in order to marry them, and then the game will end if you do. They like cake, but do not give them cake on Thanksgiving. They hate cake just on that one day. There's not much in the way of easy gifts for Jamie. They like the highest quality crops and animal products, and they make it really hard for me to find them likable enough to just 
hand over those kinds of items to them. They probably ship them themselves and use it to beat your earnings. I'm making that up, but they probably do. I put Jamie between the bachelorettes and bachelors because they do count as both. A harvest sprite will announce Jamie's gender like a newborn baby at your wedding and they will always be the opposite of whatever you chose to play as. If you're playing the Wii version, Jamie's always a girl since you can only be a boy. Basil, a traveling botanist who lives and breathes plants. He should be the third character you unlock when going to Sunny Lake and you may have to ship flowers and herbs first to get him to show up. He temporarily leaves every winter because there's just not enough plants. That's not your fault. Is he like walking by foot all the way to wherever it's warm enough for plants to be? Is there like an airport nearby or something? <laughs> Do planes exist? He can also leave at any time of the year if you don't talk to him and don't ship enough flowers and herbs. He stays all year if you marry him. And your rival for him is Nina. Basil's name. This basil, so in Japanese, in Japanese, basil from 64 and Mineral Town and the guy from like uh, Save the Homeland, Hero of Life Valley. In Japanese, they're all named basil, but they decided, you know, Natsume decided to name the one from Save the Homeland and Hero of Leaf Valley parsley because he is a different character from Basil, clearly. He looks different, he has a different eye color, he's got a different feather, he's a different character completely. Um, not even like an alternate version, like how 64 Mineral Town Basils are from each other. He's just a completely different separate character that just looks the same. So this Basil is parsley. He, he's the Parsley Basil, he's not the Basil Basil. I don't know why they named him Basil when you can see that he is not. <laughs> he is, but he is not. Why give, why make the name Parsley if you weren't even going to be consistent? Dan, an easygoing gambler who hates working and gets stranded in the village after losing all his money at the horse races, charming. After you first meet him at the horse races, he'll be homeless for a while. Also charming. <laughs> he'll eventually work at Paradise Orchard with Ronald. And you'll have to plant a fruit tree for the orchard to open. And he might move out if you don't keep shipping enough fruit. Your rival for him is Eve. Also, his voice. Carl, a sweet guy who starts out working at the Moonlight Cafe. You'll meet him on spring 5th, yes, yeah, spring 5th, and he will sometimes hang out in the town square until Moonlight Cafe is opened on summer 1st. Then he'll finally get to open up his own cafe, Cafe Callaway, on fall 1st. He'll move out if you don't talk to him and don't ship enough eggs, milk, and breadfruit. Your rival for him is Ellen, Blue, Hank's nephew and Ellen's cousin who lives and works at Blue Sky Ranch. He's quiet and hard to get close to, a little rude and takes his farm work very seriously he's there from the start and never moves out your rival for him is Anne, which is very interesting i forgot to talk more about basil's name <laughs> i'll go back okay but first Anne, Anne. so with how snes how they're like the grand the grandmothers the snes bachelorettes okay are the grandmothers of the 64 bachelorettes and then, you know, Magical Melody is kind of like an alternate version of SNES. So this kind of really works out with like Blue and Anne getting together and then they can, yeah, be, both be the grandparents of uh, Anne, the other Anne and Grey. That really works out well with the family tree and it doesn't, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't imply anything creepy like a lot of the other pairings might. Ray. A shy fisherman who doesn't seem to have any place to live, even though he has his own TV show, I guess. You'll meet him after you meet Terry at Sunny Lake, and I know you at least have to catch a fish. I think you have to ship it. You have to ship, ship a fish, and then go. <laughs> and he moves out if you don't talk to him and don't ship enough fish. Your rival for him is Maria. Lewis, an awkward inventor who initially arrives because he likes fireworks and you'll meet him for the first time at the fireworks festival on summer 24th 
and he'll end up working at the junk shop when it gets an expansion. He moves out if you don't talk to him enough and don't ship enough ore. Your rival for him is Lila. Bob! An animal lover who helps at Blue Sky Ranch as well as delivering your shipments. You'll meet him on spring 3rd and he never moves out. Your rival for him is Gwen. Joe! A very friendly and social guy who loves fishing and works as a carpenter's apprentice along with his brother Kurt. He's there from the start and never moves out. Your rival for him is Katie. I've never married Joe, but he's just such a happy dude. He brightens my day. Kurt! A not... A very not at all social guy who works as a carpenter's apprentice with his brother Joe. He's there from the start and never moves out. Your rival for him is Dia. Alex! A caring doctor who works at the clinic and sometimes works a little too hard. He's there from the start and never moves out. Your rival for him is Gina. You can't marry her, but I think it's worth noting that Nami is in this game for some reason. She's the weather girl. You can see her on the TV and she'll show up at the end during summer. Only during summer, right? Yeah, it's only during summer. I'm really confused about why they added her specifically and have her not be a bachelorette. And I, I really don't know why Henry isn't a bachelor. Because Carl is there to be kind of like Jeff, since he's a 64 rival, even though they don't look alike, but you know, they, you know, they kind of fill the same role. Uh, and Henry is clearly supposed to be like Harris, they actually look alike. You'd think that if they wanted to replace him as a bachelor, like if they didn't think he was cute enough or something, you'd think they'd like make a Rick look alike. But no, instead they grabbed up the doctor for that spot instead. It's just a really weird choice. Um, cause you know, for the most part, it seems like it's trying to be more like 64, not like Mineral Town, you know, with the whole Carl being like Jeff in the absence of Rick, you know, uh, I mean, Rick is in 64, you know, he wasn't a, a rival or anything. So yeah, I don't know why they did that. We didn't really need a doctor either. Cause like Martha and Gina can fill that role. Graphics. I gotta say, I love this game, but it is not one of my favorites when it comes to appearance. The animals are cute. I like the animals. They're fine. They got bubble cows. Um, the world is fine. <laughs> there's, there's this one spot where the ground's texture is messed up that I always look at. A Wonderful Life was so much more beautiful and I can't help to compare because both of them were on the GameCube. They're super different games, I shouldn't even be trying to compare them. Something that bothers me is that they make the air wavy in summer, which I think is neat, but I don't know, something about it makes me feel kind of sick. I get kind of nauseous. I try to ignore it. It's not- I played this game- it's not like it's impossible for me to get through. I've played this game so much on so many different files. It's fine, but that really bothers me. The people, though? The people. <laughs> Why are they built like this? I get they're supposed to be chibi. They're supposed to be cute, little big-headed people, uh, but it doesn't look right. <laughs> their body... <laughs> they do look like weird uh, squished babies, squished toddlers. People say this all the time. I see people say this. That's exactly, that's exactly right. That's what they look like. Weird little fat babies just squished down. The Friends of Mineral Town remake had really cute chibis, I think. These ones are just so weird. Their butts are so big. If you ignore their shapes, there's some really good character designs. Since, you know, half the characters are from SNES, I do like seeing them in more detail. I do prefer them this way, even though they look like squished toddlers. I can't say the same for the characters that come from Save the Homeland though, because like their old designs were so much better. What did they do to Katie? What did they do? Music and sounds. I like most of the music. I really love going to the Goddess Spring because of the music there, but I do get annoyed during the summer. I do not, I just I don't like the summer in this game. I don't like the wavy air. I don't like the music. That's the only music I don't like though. And I don't even really know why I turn the volume down in summer. I also really love, I think, I guess it's Jamie's theme. I don't know what the, the song's called. It shows as soon as Jamie shows up. I know it shows during that first cutscene when you, when you try to walk into Jamie's um, yard. 
I love that song. Like in A Wonderful Life, the characters don't have voice lines, but they do have voices, little greetings and sighs and stuff. My opinions on those vary widely between each character. Like, Eve is cute. Katie's very annoying. And, ah, uh, Dan. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> I love dance, honestly, it's hilarious. Not even just the sound when you talk to him, the sound when you give him something he loves. What were they going for? I really wonder if that was even like intentional. Over mine, I don't mind the villagers having voices, it gives them some more personality, but we make sounds too, repeatedly and loudly as we do our farm work, and I do not like that at all. I think what makes it worse here than when other games do the same thing is how we have to yell while we power up our tools. And I can certainly say our voices do match our bodies, if that makes sense. Replayability. With the large selection of marriage candidates, the different ways you can set up your farm depending on where you live, and the really large amount of letter spaces for names that allow for me to pick basically any naming theme that I want without worrying about having to fit it in only six spaces or whatever, I find this game to be very replayable. I do wish characters had more dialogue. They have like one thing they say each day and it usually repeats each day depending on what their heart level is. Um, they say something different if it's raining. And then after you talk to them the first time, all they have to say is whatever, they, whatever their goodbye line is. This game is the reason that I have multiple memory cards for my GameCube, even though I don't really have a lot of GameCube games. Um, by the way, there are four save files per memory card for this game. Do I recommend, while I have a few complaints, several complaints. I do actually recommend this. I do. Um, this is a lot of people's favorite and people wish for remake all the time, which I hope it gets one so bad. I really hope they, they fix my complaints. They, they fix a lot. They, they fix a lot with A Wonderful Life. I love the large selection of marriage candidates from two games put together how customizable your farm and house are, the classic farming style, and collecting musical notes. I recommend this game a lot, it's so good. It's very charming, very addictive, so if the squished characters don't chase you away, I think you should give it a go. Um, unless they do make a remake, because if they do, a good job on that, just like they did for Wonderful Life, and I think they did good for Friends of My Town too, I feel like I'd more likely recommend an updated version, but I probably shouldn't say that yet, because I don't really know what that would turn out like. What if it sucked and I'm saying this? But the remakes have been good, so... I feel pretty good about that assumption. But that's all for this video. Feel free to ask any questions if anything wasn't covered or made very clear. Or any other comments. Tell me your favorite marriage candidate. I've got Twitter, I've got Patreon, if you're interested in any of that. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!